In the last video, we got this confirm dialog to pop up. We explicitly just set this in code to appear. And when you click the buttons, it does close. There's no way currently for it to pop up. But what we want to do is when we click this delete button here, that's where we want to kind of pop up this dialog and also listen to the response of what happened and do something logical with it. So let's just carry on where we left off. So now we know it all works. Let's just undo the temporary code in the view model here, making a new dialog. We don't want to do that. But we know what we need to do. All we have to do is set the current dialog to something and then call show on that dialog in order to open it. Or in this case, I just set the underlying property to open. Now, where we want to do this is, I think, in the actions page. Yeah, so what we want to do is in here, we need to open the confirm dialog. So in here, we want to make a new confirm view model dialog, which we know is what we want to do, or rather just confirm dialog view model rather. Then in here, we're gonna customize it. So we want to set the message to, are you sure you want to delete this print? That'll do. We could have the title as uh, delete, and then you could even put the print item in there, some details about the print item. So we could do, a uh, dollar sign, delete that question mark. And we need to get index of that. So what we could do is get the item first or get the index first. And of that, and then we could, well, if we've got the index, so I suppose uh, the first thing is if index equals minus one you just want to return because there is no item to delete then we can safely now do the print list with the index and get some information so we could do the uh, i don't even know what we called it job name so you could say delete and then job name and are you sure and the yes and no are fine so we don't need to change them and now we need to do something here so we need to await because we know we need to kind of wait for a dialogue to close so we know it's going to be a wait so we'll change this to async task. This then wants to be uh, ending in the word async. That's just by definition, so it's obviously not going to complain. This is still actually complaining about. Uh, uh, it wants to name the UI as lowercase UI, which we, yeah, that doesn't look right. So can we just add a warning to ignore that? Disable with comment here. Yeah. So there we go. So now we've done an await on this. Anywhere this was called, which I think it's called. Yeah, it's called in these two places. We need to bubble these up. So these need to go to async tasks as well. They need to rename to async. And they need to await this. Uh, another one here. So async await. Change this to async task. That's all bubbled up. So now we know we can await something here. So the question is, how do we now open a dialog? We know what we need to do is in this case, because this view should be aware, this action page view, we want to open the dialog on the main view. So the first thing it's gonna need access to is this current dialog. And how do we do that? Now we've got dependency injection. Well, it's really, really simple. Could not be any simpler. We just put our dependency up here. So we want access to the main view model, please. We do this. And that's it. We've now got access to the main view model. It could not be any simpler. And now in here, what we could do is just go right then the main view model dot current dialogue equals, and then we can set it to this. Now we don't want to do that. Let's do it anyway, and let's just see what happens. It's still going to remove the item, but we should at least see it pop up. But what we want to do is have a service that is explicitly used for opening dialogues. Uh, so you can see this is now still visible for some reason. The first question is why is that still visible? Well, it shouldn't be visible. Maybe fallback option as zero. Or rather false, not zero. So I think if the current dialog is false, then it's making visible true. There we go. So now if we go to here, click delete. That did nothing. <laughs> so let's see what went wrong. I know this isn't the way we're going to ultimately do it, but it should still have worked. So why would that not work? 
main current dialog. Oh, it does work, we just didn't set it to visible. So what we do is obviously then set the confirm dialog view model and show. And you could use this, you, you wouldn't have to make a dialog service, but we definitely want to make this a little bit cleaner. So if you click that now, there you go, you can see it's popped up and it's asking us, and if we click something, it's going to close. But we don't want to have to do this every time. That's kind of setting explicitly a property of current dialog and clicking show, or I guess we could for now. We could make a service that's going to accept ultimately a view model, but then this view model on the main view, so this one here, is going to have to have something like a interface here, say I dialog provider. And it's technically the correct way of doing it. And then this is going to expect a dialog. And in fact, let's just do it. It's a bit more complexity considering this application's a single, effectively a single view. But let me show you how you do it properly. So I'm just going to make a new folder. Interfaces. I'm not a massive fan of interfaces. I almost never use them. Probably should, but I don't. So it's going to be a I dialog provider. And then here it's going to have a dialog view model. I will just call it dialog. I guess we'll just call it dialog. No need to call it current dialog. We currently have an observable property, so it's a getter and setter. So I'm not sure how this is going to work with the view model, but I guess we'll see. So if we do that as a dialog, we change this name to dialog. It should then hopefully pick up that we have uh, implemented it by doing this. We'll then have to obviously change this to dialog for the minute. Does that still work? Uh, change this to dialog. This to dialog. Yep, so that's all still working. But now what we have is a main view model with an interface that we can now use in dependency injection to find and set this property. And to do that, we will go to factories now. It's really services, and we don't have a folder for that yet. So we'll just right click, uh, add folder services, make a new class called dialog service. And in here, we will want the class to have a uh, public async task, and we'll call this one show dialog. We'll make this more conventional now. And it might have a result as well, but the way we'll do our dialogues is we're not going to have a result. We're going to use the view model to host anything about what we want. So we won't return anything, we'll just await it. We'll want to pass in a view model. So we'll want a T dialog view model, and this is just a bit of generics. And then you've got the dialog view model there, and we can do something in here. We want to limit the dialog to being a dialog view model. There we go. And now we can call show dialog, pass in the model. But we also need to pass in the host, if you will, the place where we want the dialogue to go to. So we'll have another generic, and we'll put that first, and we'll have T uh, host, say. And then we'll put T host here. And then we need to limit the T host as well. And this is where we can say the T host needs to now be this I dialogue provider. So now this call only needs to know that it's a dialogue provider and that the view model we want to set is a dialogue. What we're going to do is exactly what we've done here. So this kind of logic here, or rather really just this, these two lines. So we cut these out, paste them in here, and let's look at what we do. We now know the host is of a dialog provider. And because it's aware of a dialog, we can now do that. We can set the dialog view model straight up and we can call show. Now, the thing we don't do at the minute is wait for this to end. But if you remember, inside of the dialog view model, we made this wait function that we'll just await until we call close. So in this, because we want to await it, we're going to do that, exactly that. We're going to just await the dialog view model dot wait async. Wait for dialog to close. And set 
host dialog to provided one. So now what we can do is inject this into the app inside of the code behind. Uh, we'll chuck it here by the page factory and it's as simple as doing collection dot add singleton and we'll do a dialog service. Now in the actions page, instead of injecting the main view model, we now don't specifically, actually we still need that, so let's leave that in. We also need a dialog uh, service. There we go, dialog service. And in here, we can now do dialog service dot show dialog. And it's gonna expect a host, which is the main view model, and it's gonna expect the dialog. We can now await that as well because we've added that to this call. And so now we won't get to this call until we click something. And this allows us to then chuck a dialog up on any view model that inherits the iDialog, uh, whatever we called it, iDialog provider. So it's a bit more transferable now. We click that, there we go, popped up. You can see we haven't hit the breakpoint yet. And as soon as I click an answer, we now move on. So we have a true dialog. Uh, provider now and you might ask well what do we do when we click yes or no well if you just look at the confirmed dialog you can see you'll have the um, confirmed as false here so if we then do that again and click yes and then look at the confirmed dialog we passed in you can see confirmed is true so there is no result as such from the dialogs because the dialogs are generic this doesn't know that it's a confirmed dialog but the sheer fact that we have a view model and we bind to it means we can just inspect the view model that we passed in. And it really gives us some massive flexibility with dialogues. So now it's as simple as saying if, uh, in this case, if it's not confirmed, just return. So ignore if we clicked cancel. And this should now work as a true dialogue. We should have a pop-up that shows if we click no, it shouldn't delete. If we click yes, it should. So we go to actions. So print only drawings, delete, no and it stayed, delete, yes, and it's gone. So there we go, we have a dialogue. Uh, you can see also clicking cancel on the new item is warning us, do we wanna delete? This might be superfluous because we haven't necessarily changed anything here, so there's no edits, but I think that's probably a nice warning. You've clicked new, and if you click cancel, I think that extra warning is probably a good step. And it's doing that because we've actually told it when you click the cancel. In the code, uh, if we look at the cancel print, it explicitly calls delete from UI. So we could have, we didn't want that warning, just pass in uh, a thing here saying boolean warn equals true by default. Uh, and in here, you could say warn false. And then we could say, uh, we don't need to do any of this. So all we'd have to do is say if warn, you can pass all the logic through here, and that's fine because it will simply return if it's false and if it was true, it carries on as it would. Now, if we run that, I guess we could leave that in, canceling a new task, it deletes. But I think personally the pop-up is perfectly fine, but let's just see it in action now. Cancel, ignores the warning, but deleting one that exists gives you the warning. And you can see also at the top here, delete print 3D models A3, which is the one behind, so you kind of know. And that's now a dialog service. So I think the last thing for that is uh, to have a bit of animation. So when you click the background and dialog fade in slightly, and when you click out, it closes slightly. I think that's all we need extra there. You can see everything resizes, moves along fine. So I think literally short of animation, this is a valid working dialog now. And all we should need is to just copy and paste, say the stack panel style that we've already done on one of the parts of the code. Go into the main view, go to this, I'd say the grid, let's just fade. Uh, is it the grid? So we'll put it on the grid, paste it here, change it from stack panel styles to grid styles. Selector wants to select the grid and it wants to be opacity. Then we have to change it as visible to opacity. And then the fallback now can be zero instead of false. And I think we figured out last time that opacity, even though you just bind into true or false, it automatically converted a true or false to zero or one. The only question will be, is the opacity being zero, I bet it is, gonna stop us being able to click through, which might be a problem.
yeah, so you see we can't click through because it's still technically there. So let's try, we know we need to set as visible then for something. Let's try a little trick. So my thought is that if we bind, we know this converts a Boolean to one or zero. So I'm wondering whether the opposite way around when it's visible, will it convert a double from zero or one? Or in this case, anything that isn't zero would be true, meaning that it wouldn't be visible until it's fully hidden. So let's just try that. Uh, what would the binding be? We're going to have to name this, which is kind of the only downside. Um, we'll do name equals dialog overlay, I guess. And then it's visible. We're just binding to a self here, but we need some name to bind to. So we do hashtag uh, dialog uh, overlay dot opacity. Uh, is that all we need to do? Maybe. So now it will bind to the over. The opacity will bind to the is visible. Yes, there we go. So now we can see through. So when you click open, there we go, close. Right, so I think that's working. I think we've now got our animation. Just slow it down to see if that's actually animating in. Click action, click open. Yes, there we go. So you can see it's slowly fading in, slowly fading out, and you can't see until it's fully gone. So I guess that's a little trick on how to animate in and out items that need to be overlays. You can bind to the opacity the property you want, and then you can bind the as visible to the opacity, and until it's fully hidden, so until opacity hits exactly zero, then it will stay visible. Would be nice to have that maybe. I don't know if it's much cleaner. There should be a way to do it without this name, I guess, is the only way you'd make that cleaner. So it's not too bad. Like you almost want, I don't know if there is a syntax for this. Um, but like a, you know, me symbol or something, or dollar sign or self. I don't know whether there is a binding syntax for something like that. So you don't have to name anything. But I guess for now, just having to put a name in isn't the end of the world. So I think that's it. I think we've now got a fully usable dialogue.